that continues. Now, as I said earlier, the first equation is called the weight setting, the second equation is called the price setting. Now, in the equilibrium, what you have to do is simply equip the weight setting equation and the price setting equation. And when you do that, basically what you have is this. So this is coming from the weight setting equation, the left hand side. And then the right hand side is coming from the price setting equation. Okay. So when you equate them, essentially you have the equilibrium in the labor market. Now let's let's uh, analyze first in that equilibrium. When they are in equilibrium, this U, which is the unemployment, it's called the natural rate of unemployment. So if I ask you in the exam, what is natural rate of unemployment? Basically, it's an unemployment rate in which the labor market is in equilibrium. That's essentially the definitions of the uh, natural rate of un uh, unemployment. Okay? So, with this equilibrium level, then we can play with some scenarios here. So let's start with this chart. Okay? The, the initial point of the unemployment is here, UN. Okay? Natural rate of unemployment. Why this is natural rate? Because it's in equilibrium. Okay? And this is the level of the width setting, the curve of the width setting. And this is the line for the price setting, PS. Okay? So this is the equilibrium. Now, let's play the game. Suppose the Z, remember Z is the, is the institutional factor. Suppose the C goes up. Now, you can think of many stories about examples of the C goes up. Okay. Let's say labor union gets stronger. That's one example. Or the bargaining positions of laborers get stronger even without the labor union. Okay. So those are examples that is represented by increase of the Z, the institutional factors. So what happened if that is the case? What happened is that the weight setting equation, which is represented by this curve, will shift up from WS to WS prime. Okay. Now, if originally the, the equilibrium is here, but now the WS curve shift up, that means the unemployment goes up from UN to UN prime. So here is now the new equilibrium. That's why it's called equilibrium when Z is up, Z increases. Okay. So that is one, one explanation. And as I mentioned earlier, Europe is a good example. In Europe, there were very strong unemployment benefit. There were very strong uh, labor union. In such that the level of unemployment tends to be high compared to other industrial countries, including the U.S. Okay. The U.S. there are still labor union, but not as strong as in Europe. And also, the unemployment benefit in the U.S. is not that strong. Okay. And that is the reason why the unemployment rate in the U.S. is relatively lower than in Europe. Okay. Now let's play another game. Suppose now that the country imposed very strict anti-monopoly or anti-trust uh, law. So in other words, you know, this is a, a regulation which prevent firms to monopolize in particular sectors. Okay. Now, if that is the case, one thing that we immediately can think of is the markup. Because if you are forced to compete with many players, or you are forced to monopolize. Yes, please. Um, you said that in the U.S. there are the institution is stronger, then the rate of unemployment is also higher. Are you saying that a stronger labor union is not good, actually? No, I'm not saying that. Based on whatever it is now, yes. In this chart, yes. Okay? That is, your question is very good one, and that question is related to the level of the wages. And that level of wages is also determined by minimum wage. 
I know in Indonesia there's a lot of discussions about minimum wage. So why don't we you wait until we reach that point? Okay. So okay, it's yes, all related to the minimum wage. Okay. <coughs> but what I'm saying here is that if, for example, <coughs> this is only if. Okay. Suppose the unemployment rate here it's already in the equilibrium. Now remember, equilibrium it's all here, right? What does that mean? That means if it is in equilibrium, the wages is all, all also in equilibrium. The meaning of wages in equilibrium is the wages is is in the proper level, so it's not too low. Also, it's not too high. Okay. So, if you are already in that ideal position, here is represented by this point. Then yes, if the labor union gets stronger, or let's say. Uh, you know, the government becoming so populist, they promise so much for the labor, and yet the labor's condition is are, are already in a well, good welfare position because this is already in an equilibrium here. So if that is the case, then yes, unemployment tends to go up. Remember the story in Europe. In fact, I have a personal experience here. You know, a couple of years ago, uh, I was teaching macro also here in the business school at Cornell. And there was one student from France. Okay? And when I was explaining about this unemployment benefit, he stood up, he raised his hand, and he said, Professor, I agree with you because I'm the living example. So I asked him to explain to the class, what do you mean by you are the living example? So it turns out that he was a worker he, he was working in uh, one of the big French company, okay? But uh, a year before before that, that that moment, a year before that, he decided to to, to do study, to, to get an MBA at Cornell. So he left France, okay? And to do the MBA. And he said that even when he left the company for two years, because in order to get an MBA, you need for two years, even during the two years, he was paid by the company. So this is common in Europe. This is what they call the unemployment benefit. So he claimed that he was unemployed, which is basically not true because he decided to quit because he wants to study <coughs> here. So when that when that environment is in existence, then you can imagine there are many people like him. That means that many labor decided not to work. Now, if labor decided not to work because they receive unemployment benefit anyway, the rate of unemployment goes up. Because in a few minutes I explain to you what is the definition of unemployment. Basically, the definition of unemployment is that the number of labor force who is not working but looking for work, that is unemployment. But in this case, these guys he is a labor force member, but he's not looking for job. You see what I mean? So that is the reasons why, in this particular case, if the labor union gets stronger under that circumstances, then the uh, unemployment tends to go up. That is not a bad unemployment, because that is almost like saying the unemployment by design. Who designed it? The labor themselves. because. If they get employed, un unemployed, they get paid. They get a lucrative uh, benefit from the government. Okay, so that is the the, the explanation here. So let's let's continue now. So I mentioned earlier about the natural rate of unemployment. So the natural rate of unemployment is basically the unemployment in which the labor market is in equilibrium. Okay. So this is an example of the euro. So I was, I was almost correct. I said seven percent. Now it's about seven point five percent, which is very high, because in the U.S. it's about three percent, less than four percent. By the way, uh, this nine percent unemployment in Europe, it's not happening only five, six, seven, ten years. It happened for decades. Why? Because in Europe, the unemployment benefit has been very, very high for many, for many years. Yeah. And that has something to do with the history, with the political economy. You know, many European countries adopt the so-called welfare state. 
So that means they're really trying to to to, to please the workers and so forth. Okay. All right. So now you have the a complete picture about the relation between three things. Not only the wages and prices, but also unemployment wages and prices. So when you put all those three together in one chart, this is what you get. Okay? So let's assume your x-axis is the number of labor force. Okay? As I said, in a few minutes, I'll explain to you what is labor force and what is unemployment here. But for the moment, just imagine this x-axis is the number of labor force. Let's say there is 10 million labor force, okay? Now, from end to the left, those are people who work. Remember I said, out of the labor force, those who work, they are called the employed. And on the right side of the end, so from N to L, those are the people who don't work. So they are members of labor force, but they don't work. And yet they're looking for job. And that's why it's called unemployment. This is you. Okay. So if the total labor, which is the total uh, labor force, is 100, if the number of working people is 90, then this is 10, the unemployment. Okay. And as I said earlier, at this end, the equilibrium is the meeting between wage setting equation and the price setting equation. You still remember the price setting, right? Which is basically 1 over 1 plus mu. Okay? And mu is the, is the, uh, the markup. Okay. So that's basically the basic workhorse model in macroeconomics when we talk about labor market. Now, you recall when we talk about short run, what did we end up with? We started talking about the IS and then we talked about LM, right? And then I told you all the mechanism and eventually we ended up with what is called the aggregate demand. So when you combine the IS, LM and the equilibrium in the group market, <coughs> what you got it was aggregative one. So now since we already talked about the labor market, we should end up also with the counterpart of aggregate demand, and that is the aggregate supply. Okay? So the next few minutes I'm going to explain to you how do we generate aggregate supply from this equilibrium of unemployment wages and prices. Okay, so that's our uh, task next.